Hi guys, my name is Atisha and today in this video we are going to discuss one of the very important concept in Swift UI that you must know as an iOS developer and that is Geometry Reader. It's a concept that troubled me a lot as a beginner and I took a lot of time grasping it but I hope after watching this video you will understand this in much less time. So let's get started. So if we have a look at the definition of Geometry Reader from the Apple documentation, it says that it's a container view that defines its content as a function of its own size and coordinate space. Let's try to understand it better. First thing that we have got to know from its definition is it's a container view. Just like how we have different container views in Swift UI like HStack, VStack, ZStack, similar to that, Geometry Reader is also a container view, but it holds some unique properties. So in order to understand what those unique properties are, let's jump onto Xcode and try to implement Geometry Reader. So I've already set up this project. Uh, so let me remove this boilerplate code from here and let's try to implement Geometry Reader. So just like how we implement other container views, we simply write Geometry Reader. And if you see the initializer that Geometry Reader has takes in a parameter content, which is a closure. And that closure takes in a parameter which is of type geometry proxy. In order to implement geometry reader, we simply put curly braces and then we can use this geometry proxy value. You can name it anything you want, like geometry proxy, geometry or anything. So let's call it geometry for now. Even if you do an option enter over here, you can see that this geometry is of type geometry proxy. Okay, now let's write the code over here so let me put a text inside our geometry reader which says hello geometry reader let's also give it a background so that we get to know the frame of this particular text so let's give it a background of say blue and to the overall geometry reader also let's give a background and let's give it a value of yellow so you can see on my right we have this text called hello geometry reader now, if we compare this particular container view with the rest that are there in Swift UI, we get to see some quick observation. The first one is Geometry Reader places the content on the top left corner of the screen. However, if you see in other container views, it generally places the content in the center of the screen. That's one quick observation. Apart from that, it's basically a container that tries to take up all the available space that are there so that's why you can see that if when you give a background of yellow it takes up your entire space and even if you put, try to put this in a vstack and put another object along with this geometry reader let's say we have another text you would be able to see what i'm trying to say so let's call it hello and uh, let's give it a particular height of say 200 and also a background color so that we can see it distinctively so let's give it a background of green so now you can see that all the remaining available space that was there geometry reader is really very greedy and it tries to take up the available space Okay, so these are the unique properties that Geometry Reader has. So now let's go back to its definition and try to understand the rest of the pieces. So now we know that it's a container view. Secondly, it says that it defines its content as a function of its own size and coordinate space. Meaning we can get the size of the container, that is its width and the height, and also the coordinate in relation to the multiple coordinate spaces that are there, like local, global, and the name one. But how will we get all of this information? Now comes the role of this geometry proxy variable. So let's go to this, uh, how this geometry reader is defined and then further go within geometry proxy. So you can see that it has these two variables that are going to be used. First is the size, that is, it gives us the size of the container view and also it gives us a property of frame by which we can access the frame of our view in relation to the other coordinate spaces. So let's uh, first see how we can access the size of the container. So for that, let me remove this code and go back to the previous code that we had. And here, uh, inside of our geometry reader, let me remove this text and rather put a rectangle. Let's fill it with the color indigo. And apart from that, let's create a VStack in which we are going to print its width and the height. So let's create a text and print its width. Now for accessing the width of this container, we will use this geometry proxy variable that we have created over here and we can access the width with this dot size and write the width. Similarly, we can find out the height as well. So for that, I'll replace this width with height and this one as well. Okay. 
Uh, let me also give it a foreground color so that you get to see it better. So let's give it a foreground color of white. So you can see that the width here is 393 and height of this container is 759. So you can see how easily we are able to access the width and the height of the container. The size comes in really very handy whenever you want to put multiple objects inside your geometry reader and uh, want them to take different width and the height based on the container width and the height. For example, let's say instead of having just one rectangle, we want two rectangle one below the other, one to take up 80% of the container's height and second to take 20% of the container's height. So let's see how we can do that. Let me comment this particular one out. Let me put this in a V-stack. Create one more rectangle. So let's give it a different color so that we can see how it is looking like. Now, apart from this fill property, let's also give it a frame property via which we will give it a height of 80%. So let's give it a height and make use of this geometry variable and access the height of the container now i want this particular rectangle to take 80 percent of the height of the overall container so i'll multiply it with 0 0.8 similarly i will copy this and paste this for this particular one and give it a height of 20 percent so you can clearly see over here that our indigo rectangle is taking up 80 percent of the height and this green one is taking up 20 percent of the height now you might think that this is also doable with UI screen dot main dot bounds and you are completely right over here. But one major benefit that geometry reader has over UI screen dot main dot bound is even if the orientation of the simulator changes, the view looks as expected and adapts to it. So let me quickly run this and show you. So you can see over here that even if I change the orientation from this to something else, our view looks as expected. However, this is not really possible with UI screen dot main dot bound. So geometry reader becomes really very helpful whenever we want to create responsive layouts. Okay, so by now, I hope you understand the size property. Now let's talk about the frame property in detail. So let's go to how we have defined this frame function. So we can see that it takes in a parameter which is of type coordinate space. Now this coordinate space can have multiple values. It can have a value of either global or local or name. One. So let's try to implement it. Now along with this width and the height, let's try to print the coordinate space with respect to local and global. So I'll create a text and I will write local x and y to see the x and y coordinate with respect to its local space and here geometry and access the frame function and here we need to specify the coordinate space protocol so here we want to write local and along with that we also want to find its origin so we'll write origin dot x similarly we will write it for uh, origin dot y as well so i will write over here here we will write origin dot y similarly let's find it for global as well so I'll write this over here and instead of local, I'll replace it with global and similarly, I'll do it for this one as well. So here you can see that local X and Y is 0, 0. Let me also convert it to integer so that you get to see it better. So here you can see that the local coordinates are 0, 0 because it's local is with respect to itself and it always start at 0, 0. So you will always get this value whenever you are accessing the local origin uh, x and local origin y. Now for the global one, you are getting the x coordinate as 0 and the y coordinate as 59. Why you are getting 59 is because of this white space height that is there. So this white space height is basically 59 and this is the difference between the device and or your container. So that's why the height is 59. And since uh, your container is getting touched with your screen that you have, the global coordinate space, that's why it's coming out to be zero. If you try to give some padding to your container, you would see that your X global X would change and it's coming out to be 16 because of the space that is there. Now, one of the major benefit of having access to the coordinates with respect to multiple coordinate spaces that are there is, in case I want to position a certain element on my screen based on its relation to other coordinate spaces, I can easily do that. For example, if I want to place a circle inside my container in the center, I can do that. In case I want to place that circle with respect to its global coordinate space in the center, that also I can do. Let me quickly show you how we can do that. So let's say we have a circle inside our geometry reader. So let's do that. Let me fill it with uh, yellow and let me uh, 
make it a bit small so i'll set its frames width as say 50 and height as also 50. now i can position it based on the different coordinate spaces that are there so let me put the x coordinate so i will put the x coordinate as geometry dot frame and in the local coordinate space i want to keep it in the center so i will access this mid x property and i want to keep its y coordinate as mid of y in the local coordinate space so i'll write mid y so you can see that this circle is now placed in the center of the container now in case you want to put another circle that is there in the center of the whole corner like the global coordinate space that also you can do let me change its color to say black and here if i replace this one with global and this one also with global so you can see that there is a difference between the two let me remove the padding so that you can understand the calculation very easily so the center of this yellow circle is basically the total height of this container that is 759 divided by 2 and the width would be 393 divided by 2 and the center of this black one would be this 59 added with 759 and another 59 that is there at the bottom divided by 2 and the width of it would be again 393 divided by 2. So you can see with the help of the geometry reader we can access the width and the height of the container and also in case we want to place the content dynamically on our screen with relation to different coordinate spaces that can also be done. So in the next video I will show you a really beautiful use case of geometry reader and that is with the help of geometry reader we will build a carousal in Swift UI. So I hope after watching this video you would have got a clear understanding of what geometry reader is and what it does. So if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more such videos in future. See you in the next one.